Hey everybody, this is Al Spath, back on the air on Positive Poker Insiders. Today we're going to be over at a $10 uh, sit and go on True Poker and look what I just woke up with in the first hand. Holy mackerel, pocket aces. Now usually I bet three times the big blind, but since I'm under the gun and since it's early and everybody's rather deep with chips, I'm hoping that somebody gets a little rambunctious with an ace king or a pocket jacks. And we can go to the mats. Uh, I don't think he's got pocket kings here. So we're going to bet two-thirds of the pot. See what's going on. King, queen would be nice. That shouldn't hurt me at all. Two-thirds of the pot's 296. We're going to make it a little bit, in case he's got a draw here, we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Still calling. Not the greatest card. He could have picked up the back door flush, but I'm going to say that I'm still out ahead. I want to get paid here. I'm going to go with uh, three, 362. It maybe pays me, or maybe he goes over the top of me. <laughs> exactly what I wanted him to have. We milked him for 900 chips first hand. Remember, when you get a big hand, you don't want to waste it. You really have, you don't get that many big hands, so you have to make some progress on uh, building your stack. You can't just get the blinds when you have pocket the air and positive. Business being in that, of the big blind. 810 suited. Uh, some people call these suited connectors. I call them gappers, but you know, uh, it depends on what you like to call them. You know, 5 6 is a suited connector to me. Now I'm out of position. It's going to cost me 50 for 90, so I'm getting less than 2 to 1. That's not a good bet for me. The odds are not, even if this gentleman here were to put the 40 in. Still not going to give me the odds that I needed. It would have been uh, a top pair, lousy kicker. Let's say he has from late position some over cards like ace jack or ace queen. He could have a pair, but I would pick up a flush draw there and still have top pair. I would definitely come out betting here if I was in the hand. Oh, he checks. I think Joey Step here is going to bet about hmm, 180. If he checks, he missed also. 130. Half the pot, he's going to be a winner. He may have had a two and, and, and stayed in there. He was a blind, remember. Now, would I have stayed in that hand with the with the 810 if there were a couple of more, if the bet was... 60 and then there was a couple of callers before me possibly depends on what the pot odds were going to be usually when i'm in um just going to raise the blinds see how they do here uh, usually when i'm in the, in the blinds um i need like five to one usually to to make a play i'll do it on four to one if it's certain hands you know but like like 10 jack suited or something like that but if it's like two four suited I need five to one or better um, to just to jump in there. Oh, today's going to be one of those days, huh? Uh, you never know when the cards are going to turn good or when they're going to turn bad. And just because you get two queens doesn't mean a king or an ace will flop, and the guy next to you has a a, a random ace like ace ten, and boom, right there the ace comes flying off, and you're stuck with a continuation bet. Or if this guy bets into you with five thirty one. A folder. Now, if he's got an ace, he's going to jam here. So normally I would continuation bet, but I got a feeling that he's, if he's got a weak ace, he's going to jam. And so I didn't follow up on it. I think he'll jam it right now, or he'll bet big. I can't put up with two big cards like that. If he wasn't short, I would have made a continuation bet. The only reason I didn't was because he was short. 
I want you to understand that. I would still bet in that situation. Still think I'm beat. It's going to go all in or fold. He won't call. I like this hand. I'd rather raise with it than call with it. I'm the aggressor here at the table. Everybody's going to try to pick, pick on me. Now I'm out of position to this guy. He raised me three times my bet. He's got a big pair here usually. So that's an easy fold. I'm 120 for 270. I'm not getting the odds I need. I'm out of position. It didn't work out. Don't complicate matters and lose more chips. If it don't work, it don't work. <clears throat> that's an easy fold for me. Another easy fold out of position. Lousy bet under the gun by that gentleman, but that's still not going to invite me in. It's not that it's a lot of money. It's that the cards aren't great, and I'm going to be out of position probably, unless everybody folds behind me, which they're doing right now. And then when you hit the king, you've got only a 10 kicker. Now, some of you think that's great. I particularly don't, especially when the under-the-gun player is raising and could easily have the the ace king, king queen suited, pocket aces, something really good. You know the four essentials of playing a sit and go is to play the best you can, make good decisions, and get yourself in a position to get down to the bubble where you're on the on the money spots. And the second thing to do is to get into the money and get paid for your time. And that the third thing is to move up into second or first place where it's 30 or I mean 50 or 30 percent of the prize pool. The 20 percent is okay but it only nets you a few dollars over what you paid to get in for your time so it's not a good hourly rate. It was last time I had the jack 10. So what we want to do when we get to second place is go for first because first is a 20% difference. So we really want to put the pressure on somebody when we get into a heads up situation and not just sit there and blind down. You, if you just take a deck of cards at your home and just do it, play heads up with yourself there and just see what the cards are, you'll see it doesn't take very much to be out in front of somebody. So if you're raising from the button every single time or almost every single time, maybe 90 Five to 98 percent of the time you're putting enormous pressure on the person that's on the on the big blind uh, so take it to them <clears throat> it's not very many hands that I'm throwing away maybe nine two and eight three and stuff like that but you know if I got any kind of a big card a raisin any kind of a pair of course any kind of two suited card just just about everything you have to attack and then you have to play it after the flop if he calls or she calls or she raises and just see where you're at. If you hit a pair, you know, it may be just middle pair or bottom pair. You got to put a bunch of chips out there and try to take it down. You're just putting pressure on them that they missed. And if they call you with two overs, for instance, and then they hit a king on the river and beat you, that's all right. They, their chances of beating you were very slim if you put the pressure on them. That was a horrible play by Joey Stepp. Got some unusual names at the table. It's Joey Stepp, the franchise 48. Grandfather M, Viet Marine. That salute to him. Redneck 77. That might be a Donald Trump supporter, so I better watch out. He's toting the gun. Now see here, if, if there are some callers here, I'm going to look at the odds. It's 20 into 110. So I'm getting... A little over five to one on my money right and I know so I am gonna call this and hoping I'm gonna get a king three or 
two threes or something like that. When I don't get anything, now I got a backdoor flush draw with the king, but it's not something that's 22 to 1 to get run a runner there. So there's no reason for me to stay in, especially with a, a wet board, a coordinated board of 7, 8, 9. Too many people play the cards that go along with this possibility of a set there as well. This is an easy fold no matter what. Blinds are up 15 and 30. Remember, this is a regular 10-minute uh, round, so you don't have a lot of pressure to play a lot of hands. I played a lot early on, um, but I just had some really good cards. Posse 72, 1972 is in the room right now. And he said, good morning, Al. He says, glad to see you streaming again. I've just been so busy with different things. I had a, uh, a lesson planned with a client of mine from Australia this morning, but his wife gave birth about a week and a half ago to a baby, and he's been up most of the night, and so we moved it to next week. So I had some extra time and thought I'd stream for about an hour. These table, if, if, if I'm fortunate enough to get some money, It'll last a little over an hour. That's what it takes to play a regular sit and go. Now, if you play the turbos, you can just about cut that in half, maybe a little over half the time. This is an easy fold, even though I have a good position and people are limping. Um, I could have tried something to steal there, and if I'd have made it maybe 150, I might have even taken it down. But it's just, it's just not worth it right now. I'm risking too much to at this stage of the game. Posse says he's doing great. He's rocking the ACR for uh, NL 100 uh, to four, uh, NL 400 tables. That's great. I uh, just haven't had the time to be playing. I was going to play this morning, but uh, a cash game. But then I saw there was a few people on the sit and go, and I, I, I thought I'd do the tournament. A lot of people asking for more tournament play and more commentary for me, especially down the at the end. The last one I. I got bopped pretty good, uh, had a good hand, but still got beat, and that's the way it goes, and finished up in fourth place. Not where you want to be. But that just goes to show you, you can play right for the majority of the game and still wind up not getting any money. So you got to stay focused the whole time and, and do, its, do its best. That's a 7-8-9 flop three times, or twice at least, since we started. Another limper in early position, followed by a limper. Now, I could call here with this hand, but if I do call, I'll just demonstrate to you. If someone raises here, I am more likely to fold this hand. So it would be a, it's a, just a donation. If I raised here, uh, I could probably get these guys out and, and uh, get position on the button. You might isolate against some people here so that's not a bad flop for me it's not a great flop because of the two diamonds so it's really important for me to see this next card and hope it's black this is a blind betting here with little, little chips so my implied odds are really down but I'm going to take one card off just to see if I can bust them out and that's not the card I really wanted there now, do you think he would do that if he had the diamonds is the question. I've got top pair, diamond draw, straight draw. I'm going to call him. He does have the nuts. So playing the hand or calling with this hand got me in trouble when I didn't have to. I lost 450, 500 trips. And there's no reason for me to play that hand. It's not a good hand. It's out of position. Now, I do that from time to time in these, these sessions just to show you what would happen because these are the mistakes that you're making, all right? As I told you, normally I would raise there. Now, he with a small stack there, he probably might have went all in and I folded or, you know, what, whatever the case may be. But it all is going to change if you play it a little bit differently. So try to eliminate the calling and get you into trouble. And then you further get deeper and deeper. Like I picked up the straight draw, and then I picked up top pair and a flush draw. And all it did was get me into losing chips. Avoid that, especially when there's like nine at the table. It's not going to do you any good. But I'm glad I, I, I showed you that. Um, and I told, oh, look at that. At the end, 
That is a pickup. All right, so let's get back to business here. <clears throat> what it's what is your job to do when you're playing or you're not playing in hand is watch. Now that guy limped in Joey, and that's allowed these other guys to either raise or or see a flop cheaply. Um, somebody with six three, somebody with a queen three, queen six suited, something like that could just easily hit two pair here. Why do you think Joey limped? Is what your question should be. And he's out. He probably had a connector, two suited cards, maybe a small pair, and he decided he would just limp instead of raise in that situation. Always consider raising before calling, okay? There's times that you're going to call, but it's very rare. Try re raising or raising in most situations. It'll do you a lot better than just calling. Uh, even folding is a better option in some cases. That 10 jag I had before, that's an easy fold. It, I didn't have to re-raise with that. That's not a good hand. Although a lot of people think it is because, you know, when you make a straight with 10 jack, and as long as there's not a 10 or a jack on the board, it's always the nuts. 10 jack, queen, king, ace. 9, 10, jack, queen, king. 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, seven eight nine ten jack all the nuts there we go <clears throat> he's on the button he's got aces against king queen this guy's gonna need a queen or that three does not help him there's no chop there because of the aces The game begins, you'll see the game go a lot faster when we get to 5100. The real game starts at 100, 200. And at 100, 200, I really need to be between 2,500 and 3,000 chips. More towards 3,000 than anything because it takes a little money, it takes a little firepower to play from that point on. Luckily, these are 10 minute rounds and so you're not posting um, a lot with a full table of nine it's going around slow and you're not being like the turbo with the with the limits go up every five minutes or the super turbo where it go up by, i think every three minutes i would avoid those especially if you're a new player start out with the regular tables they're harder to fill but it'll give you more time to play for your money more chances to get back in the game and give you an opportunity to, to sit and play a little tighter early in the game because there's plenty of time. You're not going to blind down fast. Now, pocket nines is a decent hand. Uh, it's probably in the group uh, for me. Uh, it's probably a weak group two, but definitely a group three hand. Um, but I'm out of position, so that makes it less. And now this guy goes all in. Um, I'm going to have to spend 225 I'm getting less than two to one against him, and I know he's got an overcard to me, but I could be ahead of him, but somebody could squeeze me out. I'm going to fold this hand. I think he's going to win this uncontested, but do I want to go for that little bit of money with the pocket nines against whatever? If he's got tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, he's got to be crushed. He's got two overs. It's a flip where I'm the, uh, the slight favorite. So... He might have had pocket sixes. I might have had him crushed. You're absolutely right if you're thinking that. But do I want to waste what I would have had a bet? Uh, 240. So, you know, I'm betting this is rounded off to close to 250. Let's say 300. I'm going to, a, a little less than a quarter of my stack? I don't think so. It's not my job to knock him out. It's his job to stay in the game. <clears throat> A lot of you would have taken that race with the nines. And then I would have had less chips if I lost. Now I have aces and I have 1,600. I can still lose with the aces, but my chances are much better now. That's a min raise. That's a call there. So I'm going to go three times that. And that's not enough. So I'm going to make it one more. And hope I get one of them to call me. Or re-raise me. If not... Then I'll pick up and scoop a good pot. I hope he has the ace jack. 
I'm going to bet 310, which is two thirds. I would bet three quarters if they had the button here. I could bump it up a little bit. If he goes all in, I'm going to call. Don't show the cards. That's an easy fold. So I've won twice with the aces, lost with the queens. I've not had ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, not ace, ten. Had pocket nines, I threw them away. There were no eights, no sevens, no sixes, no fives, no fours, no threes, no twos. Really, a couple of gap suited cards, eight, ten, and eight, six. But that's it. So I don't write anything down. But I catalog everything. I remember everything. I, I, I like to, and when you're starting out, a lot of times you just write them all down. And, and uh, here we got Ace Jack. If I'm going to play this thing, I'm going to play it for a raise. I'm going to raise it up to 200. Not the greatest hand in the world. It's easy for me to let this one go. I want this guy out. <coughs> He's the most important, the button, so that I get position. <coughs> But don't limp with the ace jack. Don't min raise with it. Be aggressive if you're going to come in. And the guy that limps in early position, like Viet Marine here, just disregard those limps early. There are some people that, in a tournament that have big hands that want to get you to raise. Um, and that in that situation, and they're trying to, so they come over the top. Doyle does that a lot, but in MTTs, there he comes in. He thinks this guy's stealing. Let's see what happens. No, 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 no. Oh, a club draw, too. Only a jack to save him. And he's gone. Posse says, wow, 9-9. Nine, nine. When he shoved, I would have reshoved. The other two guys didn't have good hands since only calling the big blind. Well, I, I understand what he's saying. We talked about that. But what am I gaining by it? You know, what am I gaining? I'm, I'm, I'm going to flip for a couple of hundred chips that I really need later on and, and if I lose it I'm getting this guy back in the game it just to me didn't make sense to do it but I understand why posse and some of you out there may have reshoved with the nines I'm not saying it's wrong I'm just saying and giving you the reasons I can't do it oh he hit the jack oh and he hits the king right back at him redneck hits two pair on a flop and gets turned by the king jack well, I get another chance with the nines Got to change that moot bot there from appreciate the Lango's efforts to, to teach his efforts. <laughs> okay, well, I, I got to, he, he's just limping in an early position. I got to come up high. I don't want to see a flop. I got to worry about a 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. I don't need to see a flop. I just want that money that's out of the table at that hand. If I had Aces or Kings there, I would have made it a smaller bet because I wanted him to call me. Again, I want to make money off of the big, the big quality hands. Easy fold. Uh, Reefer four is in the house. Where's Reefer four from? I'm not sure. What's your first name? I'll give you a shout out. And if you do stream in Reefer four, let us know. I'll tell them about that too. We have no problem here at Positive Poker Insiders on giving people some marketing tools, help them out, whatever the case may be. King four. Why well, sometimes that four comes up, you see you see that that crown, you think, oh ace of clubs, oh my goodness. Scary. Good. Got my TV on. It's on uh, AMC right now. And it's playing a an old uh, series called Mash. Some of you might know it. It's only one character that we remember from the original movie Mash. Radar O'Reilly was in both. Even the Father Mulcahy was not in the original. Half the pot, half the pot.
So these cards are not really great here. We got two guys missing. So because there's two guys missing, because of an early position, I'm going to bet. I don't know what refer four saying plus plus done me one dollar Nick Ruff. its name is Nick I'm not sure about the best so he stayed I gotta follow this up and, and see if he's got the queen or not that's enough for me now I'm gonna check it and see if I can get him to bet it Exactly what I wanted him to do he steps right into that trap a lot of times you can do that in these games and this ace nine we're playing six-handed it becomes like an ace ten or almost an ace jack but I, I'm a little bit frisky here today I've been playing a lot of hands I don't need to play that one at, at this particular juncture I can let that one go but sometimes that 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 little maneuver right there where you're betting and then a card comes to improve your hand and you check like you're afraid of it you can get somebody to, to dunk some chips into the pot. So you might want to try that sometime. That's how good the ace nine would have been there. Oh, I guess uh, Reefer Four was, uh, he came in just to beg for a dollar for another thing. Sorry, we, we, we can't, uh, we can't do that. Win some free rolls. Hey, if you want to go to a place, uh, there's a good raise. I'm going to leave this guy a little time to think about it. There's a site that I was helped building. I'm not associated with it anymore. It's called uh, gopoker.in. Go poker, all one word, dot in. That's a, a site in India. And they have free rolls all day for rupees, which is their currency. And you can play those. You can't deposit them or anything like that. Uh, you can't deposit there because you need a uh, an Indian uh, credit card from a bank over there. But you can play the free rolls and win and, and, and work your way up and everything. So if you want to do it, go ahead. It's gopoker.in, which is, stands for India. Uh, there's no referral code or anything. I don't get anything for sending anybody. It's just if you want to play tournaments throughout the day, they have lots of free rolls. And uh, those of you that want some don't want to put money online or don't have a lot of money online or no means to put money on but want to still be competitive and play there's an opportunity at that site. Now, I'll raise with this if he doesn't raise uh, I'm gonna raise 200 I want to make sure that that's an impact to these guys I'll probably take this guy on I don't think I'll take this guy on Wow now it's 475 for, five, for 1600 I'm getting a little less than four to one with a pair this is a tough one for me, but I'm going to have to call this one. Five is not something that I can think I'm going to get. This was a tough one. I should have let it go, but I stayed. And it cost me. Should have kept them chips. I only had two outs. I knew I'm going to be behind a lot of cards. So even though the, the odds were close, it still was it should have been a fold for me. So that's a mistake. You got to recover from it. You can't get upset about it. You can't beat yourself up. You can't go on tilt. I think that's a mistake. Some of you may have thought it was not a mistake. Just like the nines. Some of you thought it was a mistake. Some of you didn't think it was a mistake. It's You can get to the end game. Lots of different paths. Okay. I'd like to get you the end game following the spath instead of the path method. Stay focused. Stay in the moment. Keep grinding. Don't throw chips away. I threw chips away. That's against my nature to do that. Mr. Reefer 4, who was in the house, left. He stopped begging after we told him no begging on the site. We love comments. We love questions. But we don't like people coming in just asking for money. Easy folds. The last one with the queen five suited. There's no reason for me to get excited about having a suited card. Doesn't mean much of anything.
Easy fold again. Another one. get people excited maybe they'll just uh, have a nine or a four here and somebody will lose a lot of money BW if he had the four here that's a great bet I'm trying to get the guy with a nine to bet but he does not have the four Queen three is another fold posse agrees with me too on the five five hand should have let it go again you know, we're talking about things that get you in trouble. We're trying to eliminate mistakes that you might find yourself in. Yes, I know. After the fact, Queen 3 would have tagged somebody here, maybe. But you can't play those cards, and you can't be results-oriented. You know, you just have to just play it like it lies. I think that's a draw. Easy fold. Tomorrow more or tomorrow around one o'clock. I'm not sure, but I might be streaming tomorrow with a client, a professor from the University of Maryland, who wants to do some cash game and has a lot of questions about his live game. So uh, we'll probably do a 25 cent, 50 cent table. I'll be at the table and and I'll let him tell me what he would do what I have is an agreement with him that if I sit with fifty dollars and I win fifty bucks then he gets fifty dollars off of his lesson if he loses fifty then he owes me the lesson fee plus uh, what he lost so but I do exactly what he wants to do That's another easy fold. This guy is going to get put it. Now we're seeing, remember, 51. We're getting up to that stage where people are going to start making huge bets and get committed to the pot. This guy really can't put much money into the pot without committing himself. I like to get um, another pot one. This could be this could be it right here. He might defend even with an ace seven. Harrington says ace eight. Harrington on Poldum. He has some books. He says eight, eight or better. Eight, nine, he's got two live cards. He's, there he is. He hit it. He did hit it. He had like a 30, I would say, somebody can run that number. Eight, nine, offsuit against king four. I would think he was somewhere in the, in the 32, 33% range. Because he only had a deal with the one over. But uh, I don't know if, uh, if Posse can run that in the... Uh, Calculator while we're doing this here. 8-9 against uh, King-3, I think it was. Now, I've got a suited connector here, but these lose a little value at this uh, stage in the game. So, little small pairs. So, be careful of these cards. Don't get you in trouble. You can play them early on and, and maybe late when you're making a stand. But down this time, pocket twos, threes, hands like this, they're just trouble hands. So, avoid losing money. That's my opinion. That's my advice to you we want these guys to mix it up we don't care who wins who gets all the chips we just want people to get uh, stacked down uh, this guy's now back in the game he, he, he did what he had to do he had a hundred dollars in the pot and he only had six and he felt the guy who might have a big range of hands and he called with a connector eight nine and hit one of his cards that's all you need heads up I talked about that earlier. If you do that lesson on your own lesson with a deck of cards at the table, just do them face up. Take a look at, at what it is to be uh, playing heads up. It doesn't take much to win. And play it out. Do the flop, turn, river, everything. Just see how many times the other dog can stay in there and win. It's not, not to your advantage to fold.
We need this. This is a lot of chips in the pot. This guy is squeezing these guys pretty good. He got him. All right. One guy goes up, one guy goes out. Kings are in the lead. He doesn't want a king right here. <laughs> he doesn't want a king because the other guy makes a straight. Wow. And then Grant, father, who's been getting his chips all along, has now got down to a 590 and ready to push. Any pair, any suited connector, any any uh, Broadway cards. When I say Broadway cards, now it's costing me 200 for 750. I'm getting three and a half to one. Um, I don't like it. I'm out of position. I have a weak ace. Save my money. I was almost four to one. I was almost four to one. Almost a little under. Eight nine is a forty five percent, and the king four is a fifty four. So I, I said around thirty three. It was higher because it was connected, and there was only the one over card. So that's a good. You don't want to have a guide in your head. You know that you're thirty to 40, forty, thirty five to forty five, somewhere in that. You know that you have a, a decent chance. Of surviving so when somebody attacks you that could have just about anything and you've got an eight nine or if you've got a seven eight or a six seven or something like that it it doesn't hurt to just you know put your chips in a pot and see how you do you want to get back in the game there's top pair top kick but Queens is out in front Queens is gonna hold it down now we're down to five remember the first goal was to play smart the second goal was to get down to the bubble where we had a chance to get into the money. I do not like Ace-4 suited here. If I was first, I'd raise. He did a min-raise there. Saved some money. I don't think I could have drove him out. I know what you're all thinking right now, but what if a jack comes on the river? Well, you're not going to see the river. Oh, you are. He did not re-raise. And he got to see no jack. Let's see this guy bet. Uh, he didn't bet. Didn't help him. Now it's my turn to raise. So we're going to go up. Uh, that's too much. We'll go 300 here. Take it down. You notice that these guys have been raising 200 because they want they want action. I raised the 300, which is uh, three times the big blind. I got nothing, so that's a good thing to remember when uh, when somebody um, all of a sudden changes their patterns. They've been raising men raising, and all of a sudden they raise you know three or four times the big blind. There's a reason for that. You got to be focused. You can't be watching your phone and watching the TVs if you're playing live. You need to be focused on what's going on at the table and see what's going on with people. Now, normally when I hit top pair, weak kicker, I like to check raise. But I didn't get the opportunity, and that queen will just stop me right in my tracks. Remember, I was the big blind. I would, didn't really want to be in on that hand. I could have let out again with a 10, but. That's an option for me. And sometimes I'll take that option. Here is another reason for me just to fold. Got a person here with 13. This person limped in. I'm surprised this person didn't attack. Let them see the flop. That's a mistake. Shouldn't let any caller see the flop at this stage. If I'm first, I'm raising. If somebody raises before me, I'm letting it go. Remember, he's got 818. He's going to call with any ace. Thinking it over. They have something like King Jack, Queen Jack. 
if I if he did have that, he sure is not gonna want that flop. I have to release this now if he comes over the top of me. Remember, I still had enough chips to play the game. I don't want to compound it, knock myself out. There's a difference when you're short stacked and you're defending with something like 6-7 is okay, but when you're in good shape, you don't need to. Now, I could raise here, but again, this guy is ready to, to jump in before he becomes the big blind. So taking that into account, do I want to race that person out? Now, he may fold, but I'm not a fan of the ace eight here either. Limp on the button. I would have had nothing. A lot of people. This late five players, ace eight, it's equivalent to like an ace ten. They would have put some money in the pot. I'm not... I'm not your uh, huckleberry on that one. Now, would I like to see a flop here for a 2-4 or 4-6? Absolutely. 2-5, I mean 2-3s or 3-5. But if he raises, hell no. But if he raises, I don't fold instantly. What I do is make, see, now I'm going to run some clock. I want him to think that I consider firing back at him. He could be just stealing. But I want him to know that I'm thinking about it. I don't have my button picked uh, on uh, automatic fold or anything. I want him to consider next time that he may get played back by me. I don't want him running over me is what I'm saying. Same thing when you're playing live. Got to be smart about it. Seventy-five. I'm getting. I'm getting to five to one, but I don't know what this guy's going to do. He may jam. This may be a donation. Nope. I'm going to check, and if he goes, I'm going to go with him. That's the guy I didn't want to bet. I'm going to make this five nine nine. I am in trouble. I can't knock myself out. Not with a weak jack. You hit two pairs, see? You gotta know when you're beat. I had to find out. I had to get information. Simple as that. There's the stand. Making a stand, but he made it against the queens. He hits the four. All he does is he needs is... Nope, now he needs the four. Could have hit the four or the six and won that hand, but the ten took one of those options right away from him. And now we're down to the bubble. That's what I told you about earlier. That's first goal after playing your best, which I didn't do. I didn't play my best. I did, I gave away some chips. But I'm not sitting here mad about it. Now see, he folded that time. So maybe that little bit of delay... We may have crap cards. Now, if I go out on a bubble and I have good cards, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to. I want that 150 and 150 right here. I want to see all seven cards. My two of the board with ace king. Same thing here. Ace queen. He knows he gets really hurt here if he calls. I hope he has pocket sevens. You know what I'll do? I'll show him some respect he showed me before. If he doesn't call, I'll show him that he was beat. chance to see if he'll say anything back. I want him to have the utmost respect for me being able to fold his better hand and to be able to raise and then show him that I had what I had. Here we go. Come on, call him. I don't care who wins, just call him. 
There you go. Jacks are ahead. Now they're not. Needs a jack. Now they are in trouble and out. Oh boy. Oh, he won. We really wanted him to lose, but we got this guy down a little bit. He's got chips now. Let's see the raise. Nope, just a call. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna try to take this away pre-flop. Did not get lucky with that. Whew, that's a lot of chips. Hoping that he doesn't have a king and he does, and I'm out. Now that didn't help. Trying to squeeze him out. Now I'm in the mode of I've got to shove my chips before I get in the money before this guy does. I let him back in the game and I shouldn't have done that. Go ahead. I thought my ace nine was a good play there that I could take down the pot since they both limped. But he had something better and I lost a lot of chips that would be a nice flop for this hand the 8 would be a perfect card giving somebody else the chance to have the 9-6 the I guess that's a lousy card I told you there's many paths to get to the final table and to get to the final hand of the match Mine has been a roller coaster, some good play, some very bad play on my part. But I have to take the chances. I don't think that was a bad play with trying to take that 300 with a decent hand. I just didn't get a good flop and compounded it. He's getting as slow short as me. Let me see the flop. Just let me see the flop. Yeah. He'll fold. Oh no, he loves to. Look at that, he likes the limp call. I think he would check the ace. Ends. He could have taken that away. I don't get involved with that hand. Even against the small stack here, he's possibly going to defend. Makes me small stack now. We just need him to wake up with something like an ace jack or ace ten and to shove it and lose. But I'm running out of chips and I have no options. This is where I want to get my money in right here first before I put the blunt. But ten seven? No. Ten nine? I would have shoved there. Actually would have shoved. He should shove. He's first in. I'd love two callers here. Yeah, that's two chances of beating him. They're going to check it down. It's just a, a an unwritten rule trying to get the guy out. And they got him out. And they got me in the money. It's collusion, but it's a legal collusion. Everybody knows what you do in that situation. So I made myself in the money. That's the goal of this. Oh, here we go. Double up, maybe. Oh, I get shafted there. Still got a boat, though. He got a good draw. And let me back in the game. I'm going to just limp to see what this guy does. I am just going to check. I am betting here. I'm going to bet that like, I, I hit it. So I hope you take away a few things from this session. I'm going to just see the flop. draw he goes away 
easy fold. We want BW here to, to play. There we go. Check. Bet. Call. Nah. <laughs> Posse says he agrees with uh, me that the uh, ace nine play was four handed. The ace is good. You get bet. I'm, 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 I'm going all in. I got an ace. If they want to call, they call. If they want to knock me out, I'm in the money. What am I, I going to sit back for here? I'm not going to let them see a free card or a cheap card. I'm going to call the 150. Nice flop. Wait and then call. I'm going to bet as if I've already made it there. Once he checks, that's a white flag. You got to bet. Now we're at 100, 200. What did I tell you in the beginning of the game? Where where it matters. Good hand, not a great hand. Could have bet there, but I got a feeling I was way behind. Our, our, we have Fold uh, Pre McGee in the house, and he wants to know Are 9 Max and goes the main game on this channel? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, cash tomorrow by me at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm to fold that. Goodness, he hits the eight. I thought I had second place. All right, all right, so what? You can have that one, seven four. He calls too many times for me to put money in against the blinds. Hit the ten. Here we go. He's got the four. That's it. Double my ass up. That was a silly move on his part. He was in great position. This guy is pissed off. 400. Easy call. Check, I bet. Bets, I fold. Simple as that. I have nothing. I told you all before. There's lots of ways of getting to the final table. There's lots of ways of winning or getting into the money. We find ourselves, ooh, I'm going to bet like I have a spade. See? First to bet usually wins. When nobody bet the three spades. Then if you four spades comes up, if you bet, a lot of times everybody just get out of your way. So put that in your back folder and save that one for a rainy day. Here we go. Oh, I don't think he had a 10 in that situation. I don't think anybody puts all this money in the pot with a 10. I would have called in a heartbeat if I could beat the 5. But he might have had like, you know, 
pocket eights or pocket nines. He didn't have to have just the five. See now, I I'm buying him time. I could, I'm not. I know I'm folding. I'm just he could have he has it already quick. But I'm buying him some time just in case. I want him to make a, a mistake. I'm not making him. Even though the five six was good early on, it's not a good hand at this point. Sure, I'll see the flop. Checks. Uh, if he checks or anything like that, I, I, I bet. But I'm not going to get into a trap. He'll call. Already. Nope. Nope. Where you from, Fold Pre McGee? Draw. Oh, he's got the six two. He got me back. He got all his chips back. He had I did not think I thought he had the draw, but I didn't know he had the six. I was willing to take the draw with him. Let's let's just put the pressure on this guy and see what he wants to do. I'm gonna have a 33% chance no matter what he does. Alright, we we'll just fight our way back. Now with two seven. Come on, have a hand. Ace 10. You can't fold it. King 10. You can't fold it. You got 8,000 chips. You're still going to have 6,000 chips. Come on, put the money in there. Give me a chance. Ah, come on. You're in the money, fella. Gives a chance to knock him out, and you can't really hurt yourself. There you go. Well, you only got one live card. No, you need a ten. Uh, too bad. It hurt me because it doubled him up, but I wanted that call. It just gives me another chance. I'm going all in with the ace. Goal now is to get up on third floor of the elevator. See, I'm on, I'm on the second, between the second and the third floor, 2,400. I need to get to the third floor, the fourth floor. I gotta move up. Can't play that, and look what happened. I could have tried to steal with it. Though. I couldn't. That would have been an all in there, and it would have worked out for me if I got a call, but. Got a couple of hands before I have to do that. No, I can't do too fine. I may get him to come. I'm just hoping he's got two suited cards or a small pair. Seven against the four. Seven against the four. I need a big card to chop it. That's a big card. Jack King. Anything, anything above seven I was going to chop there. Again, I could I'd go to steal this thing with the, the jack two and I'm not inclined. Ah, they both had bold buttons picked. I could have picked it clean. If he's got something, he could go 400 here. He's, he's really limping with lousy cards. Nah. Good boy. Yes. Remember we told you about early on about seven six. At least it puts pressure on people if they call. I, I got a decent hand. If they knock me out, I'm still in the money. Good example. Definitely all in. Take the race. I get knocked out with these. That's fine. I would like a call, not a raise. Raise means I'm probably maybe behind. Uh, Big cards, or I mean, a pair, but yeah, he ain't gonna limp too many more times. I keep doing that. He took my. 
my play. So we're still battling here. Gives me a freebie. I'm going to bet 200 here. Hope he folds. If he doesn't fold, i got to redraw for a 7. There you go. All in. I'm, I'm trying to limp here. First to bet. Clear bluff. Ugh. Didn't work. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> you gotta try something. You gotta hope that they miss just as much as you miss. Sometimes first to bet works, sometimes it don't. He had top pair. It wasn't going away. He had enough money to call the 600. Maybe if I go all in, I don't know. We won't find out though. Could knock each other out. All right, now we got some antes in the pot. He knows I can't defend unless I have something there. Doesn't take much, this is it. You know, anything I get, I'm crushing it. Any big card. Phew, so I have to get lucky. Not this time. Anyhow, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Sometimes you finish third, sometimes you finish first, but you, you play them all out to the end. You do the best you can. This is Al Spath, Positive Poker Insiders. I'm glad you joined us. I hope you'll follow us. Uh, Posse will be on soon. Uh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow for sure, and we'll see you then. Take care.